That's 
So with that, I'd like to thank you for your time and um, happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. And one uh, important thing that I started to mention to you. I told you what they pay now. I told you about the increase of the proposal rate. I didn't tell you what the taxes would be in the building, presuming that there was opposition. The current assessed value of the properties that they have filed for by our calculation is approximately 785. It would be a tax payment of approximately 785,000. So under the existing agreement, there's clearly a tax savings. But under the proposed extended agreement, in year one, you'll be paying both the uh, assessed value. Thank you. 
go the hospital planning process. But the reality is that if this contract is signed, then there will be no leverage for the community to engage in that planning process. The contract will already have been signed. So, to ram this agreement through in the last days of this council would be devastating to the future of the fourth. What we are asking for, and I'm sure people will speak to it over the course of the evening, is an opportunity for true public engagement, for an opportunity for the directly impacted communities of Washington Park and South Providence to have a meaningful hand in the process of shaping the arrangement, and at this point, we do not have that. So, I am asking this committee to please listen to the community, reject this fast-track proposal, and give the people in this room fighting chance to create a livable future and to proactively engage in thinking about what we want our community to look like. Thank you.
money out of hand uh, by people who do not care for the well-being of, of the residents of Providence and the state of Ohio. There are sick children in South Providence. There are kids who are suffering from left with them from health implications, complications. And we are here continuing
I submitted a letter on behalf of the sustainability commission with five key points that I ask you to please read through that entire five page letter before making your decision today. In summary, those five points are one, there is no limitation for urgency in currently rushing through this important decision right now before the end of the year. We need to promote the expansion of offshore wind and that we see written into the terms of the agreements, not just the promotion around it. We need long term decisions about crossword to be integrated and allowed to the city's plan of justice plan and the opportunity to process. Thank you.
and prod for it. As much as we want to, it, there's things that need to be baked into the contract, as you heard from everyone, that it's just not there. Um, we don't have the um, the written confirmation of what we need to be certain that um, we will be protected. It's not just for the money. It's not just for the money. And it's not we want we want jobs. We want a green economy. Because my 
myself, I'm a vector in SCTOR, and I'm uh, almost 40 year resident of uh, the South Side in the Wood neighborhood. Um, 40 years ago, I chose to move into the neighborhood, um, and I wanted to live here because I wanted to live in a milieu of people that didn't necessarily look like me or think like me. And I wanted to live in a neighborhood where there were things that needed to be done. And certainly in the South Side, that has been historically true because of some of the historical um, impacts uh, that uh, have taken place that have marginalized the South Side and made it um, made their neighborhoods kind of outside of the city in some ways. The Port of Providence is um, also part of that historic legacy. And um, you folks on the Finance Committee and the City Council, with this goes to City Council, have a great and serious responsibility. My question is, as many others, what is the rush? I think we would like an answer to that. But, you know, in this format, answers are not good. Um, this format allows residents like me um, to uh, share. I have been the chairperson of the Illinois and South Providence Crime Watch for over a decade um, and have dealt with many issues, salient issues, both here in the chamber and out on the, and out on the streets of the Illinois and Providence neighborhoods. First of all, there are some things that cannot be ignored. One is the toxicity that is present in the land and in the air as a result of the activities and the historical activities in the Port of Providence and Adams Island Broadport is part of that. We're facing an uncertain future with climate change and sea level rise. The storm surge that comes through at a high moon time would not have easy consequences for Rhode Island, for the city, especially in the lower-lying neighborhoods of the city. If those toxins get pushed up the Providence River into the Jewelry District, into downtown, then this building here may be partially underwater, but underwater with toxins that have yet even to be identified. It may leave our city unlivable. That's part of your grave and responsibility. Tonight, as some people have said, the asthma rates are some of the highest in the country. These issues need to be addressed first and foremost there need not be any fast tracking of these agreements with or with problem. I will thank you. The lawyers talk and they make promises. We're here, many of us have given hundreds and thousands of hours of volunteer time to make the South Side more livable more welcoming and more equitable. This issue around problem and port problems and balance at home are part of what we're striving for. Residents want and deserve Thank you, sir. to have health. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Chair. Well, we'll do this uh, here. Um, my name is Justin Royes. I'm a school social worker, uh, licensed mental health counselor, and city counselor elect of Ward 4, also known as the North End. Um, I look forward to joining you all soon as future colleagues. Um, but tonight, I'm going to add my voice to the growing opposition against uh, these resolutions. I think it's well documented that for decades, the poor province and its industrial businesses have caused significant tools of harm to families living in, uh, in our South province in the Washington Park neighborhoods. These neighborhoods have been forced to take an unfair share of this case pollution and pay the ultimate price for it with the highest rates of childhood asthma in the state, not to mention being overwhelmed with toxins that have been linked to child development disorders, cancer, neurological and respiratory disorders as well. In other words, the Prop Court, the Board of Terminal Services have for decades privatized the gains and residents of Southside and Washington Park have socialized the cost with their own lives. As elected officials, we are sworn to protect the public's interest. That is why your decisions tend to, to determine whether you move forward with th these resolutions are in high stakes, because literal lives are on the line. If this gets shut through, the status quo fails, more families are poisoned, and we will, we will be shutting the door on the opportunity to change the legal structure of private court so that it finally becomes accountable to the public for the future generations to come. And in my opinion, it will be a colossal mistake for this committee to use this lame duck section to fast track that as another massive deal for another problematic industry, a deal that was negotiated and negotiated and developed without public input and participation. The speed at which this is being pushed through feels undemocratic and goes against good government practices, especially when the tax agreement doesn't expire until 2024 and the lease isn't up until 2036. The rush to get this done with the potential of devastating lifelong consequences while the vast majority of the city isn't paying attention is in my view disappointing, harmful, and unethical. And so I urge this committee to do the right thing tonight to give Southside and Washington Park and all the provenance a moment of hope and relief by rejecting these resolutions. Our most vulnerable families in the city can't afford 30 more years of being overburdened with toxic pollution. Thank you.
that agreement, those, these agreements would all run at the same time. And any, the first default provision provides that any violation or non-compliance with the revenue sharing agreement to the city would also be a violation of the trust agreement. So that, that would be a problem for the trial court uh, because then they would violate the agreement they have with their investors. Um, one example of a provision that we would want strong enforcement of is the MEPC requirements that we have. Um, so the increase, the uh, increase in jobs that I believe one of the gentlemen recently discussed, um, there, there are provisions that would encourage local residents to have first access to those jobs. Um, so I think those, those are the highlights of the differences between current agreement we have and the new agreement. And the context for the timing of it is that um, there's this opportunity to expand the wind energy production in that location. And Prophecourt and the city have been aggressively negotiating these terms for the last two and a half years. Thank you, Chair.
Madam President. Oh, Madam President. Oh, Madam President. Oh, Madam President. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Sorry. <laughs>
I'm just trying to express the fact that we do. No, express the fucking fact that you push. Do you get that, Kayla? I did. Fucking, what kind of shame is that? It's a fucking monkey pony show. Like, what the fuck?